Hello everyone and welcome to my YouTube channel. Today I'll be showing you how to make this leather jacket in Quill 3D. Let's get started. Also, if you want to support me or if you need this jacket and you don't want to create it yourself, you can check out my Connect Closet Market. There are a lot of free and paid items there that might be helpful to you. I've got two reference images here just so I know what exactly I'm looking for. Now we bring an avatar from library and we start with the polygon tool. With the polygon tool, we create the base of our jacket and we create a shape like this. For the curve points, which are the orange points that you can see, you need to hold down control key on your keyboard. With transform pattern tool, we select our pattern and hit control D to create a symmetric pattern. Make a copy of one of the front patterns for the back with Ctrl C and Ctrl V and adjust its position in the 3D window. To flip it horizontally, you need to right click on it and select the option flip horizontally. With internal line tool, create a line inside the pattern that connects these two points. Then right click on it with edit pattern tool and select cut. Now you can delete this pattern since we don't need it anymore. Right click on this edge and select unfold symmetric editing. And then with the edit curve point tool, add a bit of curve so the color part looks a little bit smoother. Start the sewing process with the segment sewing tool. You can do the sewings in the 2D pattern window or the 3D pattern window. As long as you get the sewings right, it doesn't matter where you do it. Select your fabric and scroll all the way down in the property editor until you see the preset option. From here, you can select the fabric that you want. I'm gonna select cotton heavy canvas for now, but I will change this later. We sew these two segments to each other. You can also do this with the segment sewing tool, which I think it will also be easier, but I guess I chose to do it the hard way. Simulate with the space key on your keyboard. When you check the sewings with edit sewing tool, you'll see the difference in the length of the two segments. In this case, we need to make this segment a little bit shorter. With the smooth curve point, you can turn any point into a curve. If you don't like the curve that it creates, you can hit Ctrl Z to go back and do it one more time. Select all of your patterns and from the property editor window, bring down the particle distance. The lower the particle distance, the smoother and better your fabrics will look, but you need to consider the fact that this action can slow down your project. For the sleeves, we start with a rectangle with edit pattern tool, right click on the segment and select a split and uniform split. Move this point up, we're going to convert this point to a curve point later and since the pattern is looking a little bit too small, we're going to scale it up. The armholes are also looking too small, so we're going to freeze this pattern so it doesn't get simulated, then we will edit the armholes and make them bigger. Back to the sleeves, convert this point to a care point and with add point tool add a point right in the middle of the segment with the segment sewing tool sew the sleeve to the armhole. Unfreeze the pattern and from the left side of the 3D window adjust the sleeves position. Freeze the front pattern then simulate. Now you can sew these two segments to each other.
The length of the bottom part of the sleeve is usually smaller than the top part, so right click on the segment and select change length. Change the direction to both so you're making the segment smaller from both sides and also choose a value for the new length. It was looking too small after simulating so I needed to change the length again. To create these outlines, hold down shift key and select these segments, right click on them and select offset as internal line. Click two times on one segment of the internal line so the whole internal line gets selected, then right click on it and select cut and sew. Create more internal lines by right clicking on one segment and selecting offset as internal line. Choose the distance, click on OK. Do the same thing for the back. Hold down shift key to select both internal lines, right click on them and select cut and sew. Add another simple internal line which starts from the armhole. Then right click on it and cut and sew it. To make this puffer diamond pattern, we first need to add even more internal lines. But this time, these internal lines create the same kind of diamond pattern. After creating your first internal line, right click on it and select offset as internal line. Make sure that the direction is correct. If not, check the reverse direction box. Change the value of both distance and number of offsets so the diamond shape that we create looks closer to the reference image. Select all of the internal lines by double clicking on one of them and then hit Ctrl C, Ctrl R to copy and mirror paste. Adjust the new internal lines position. With edit pattern tool, click four times on one of the internal lines, right click and select extend trim to pattern outline. We want to have that diamond puffer shape on the top of the jacket as well so what we need to do is to select all of those internal lines and copying them with Ctrl C and then pasting them with Ctrl V. For the puffer sleeve, right click on the segment and select offset as internal line. Then increase the number of offsets and also the distance value. Select the bottom internal line on the sleeve and cut and sew it. Hold down shift key and select these two segments. Right click and select offset as internal line once again. Number of offsets needs to be a value of 1 and the distance needs to be a value around 2 cm or 1.5. Do the same for the back and then hold down shift key on your keyboard. Select these internal lines and right click on them. Select cut and sew. Make a copy of our current fabric, rename it to something like fair and then change its color. This is just so we can tell the fabrics apart for now. Then select all the patterns that we want to have that fair material and assign them to the fair fabric. With the smooth curve point, turn these two points into a curve, then you can edit them if they look a little bit off. To have that puffer effect for the diamond shape parts of the jackets, we select these two patterns, right click on them and select layer clone over. While both of the new patterns are selected, right click on them and select remove linked editing. Add a positive value of pressure to the new patterns and a negative value of pressure to the other patterns. Scale these patterns up, if you want the puffer effect to be even more stronger, you can also decrease or increase the pressure value.
since the process for the back is exactly like the process for the front, I'm going to show you guys the time lapse of what I did here. Change the render type of the fabric to leather and also make the fabric black. You can change the roughness value in the property editor and also you can add some thickness to the fabric. Make sure the thick surface texture is enabled. With the zipper tool, create the zipper starting from a particular point. This is really important because if you don't start from a point, it can get a bit tricky and your zipper won't look right. Select the zipper and in the property editor window, uncheck the fasten zipper option. Click and drag your zipper all the way down. You can select different parts of the zipper and from the property editor window, you can change their color, their render type or even other options that it gives you. If you want, you can select all of your patterns and bring down their particle distance to a number around 11 or 10. To create that puffer effect for the sleeves, right click on one of the sleeves and select layer clone over and here we will do everything we did before for the puffer parts. For the fur fabric, you can put the render type on fur and use its presets or even make your costume fur fabric. I have a video on that you can check out. But Cloth3D's own marketplace Connect Close Set gives us some really good and also free fur fabrics which we can use for this project. I will link the website down in the description and from here I'm gonna download some fur fabrics that I think are suitable for our project. We will test them in Cloth3D later to see which one looks closer to our referenced images. After you download the zip files, extract them, put them in an easy access folder, then go to Cloth3D, select the fur fabric, open the fabrics from here. Now we're gonna test to see which fabric is more suitable for our project. You should check the fur fabrics from the render window. If you want to change the color of this fur fabric, you need to change the color, the tip color, and the mid color. You can also try different fabric presets. Some fabrics will make the puffer effect stronger or some of them will make the leather look unnatural. You just have to test and try different fabrics and see which one works better. Keep in mind that after changing the fabrics presets, you need to simulate to see the results. Another important thing is that these fabrics presets have different thicknesses. I will show you later another way to add thickness to these patterns without changing the fabric presets.
To create these small details, hold down shift key and select these segments. Right click, select offset as internal line, select the distance and click on OK. Now you can right click on them and select cut and sew. For the inside part of the jacket, select the leather fabric and uncheck the box use same material. Now this part can be a bit tricky. We need to open and add the fur fabric just to use it for the back. But as you can see, once I add the fabric, the front will also use the same material. So we need to change the render type and the color of the front of the fabric once again. We might even have to change the fabric's presets since the fur that we added has different presets. The 3D modeling is almost done, but there are always things that we can do that can make the results better. There is a website called MBNCG that I will link it down in the description. You can download free materials from there, 4K or even higher resolution materials might be too heavy on your PC, but you have the lower resolution options as well. I'm gonna download these two materials in 4K resolution. Make the copy of the first fabric and if you want, you can check the box use same material as front for the back. After extracting the zip files we downloaded from Ambient CG, drag the normal map of fabric 022 and drop it in the normal map section of the new fabric. Hold down shift key and assign these patterns to the new fabric. Now for this fabric, we're going to use the leather material that we downloaded from Ambient CG. We're going to use its texture, normal map, and its roughness map. With Edit Texture tool, you can adjust the transformation of the texture. And since we added the normal map, the texture map, and the roughness map all together, when we make any changes in the transformation, all of them will change together. Remember when I said that I will show you another way to add thickness to your patterns? Well, just select the patterns that you want to be thicker, and from Property Editor, you can add thickness rendering to them. Something that can help with the jacket looking more natural is bringing down the skin offset which is the distance between the skin of the avatar and the patterns. If you want to change the letter color, you need to check the box desaturation and then you can change the color of the letter fabric. Thank you for watching, I hope that this tutorial was helpful. If you liked this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel and if you have any questions, please comment them down below so I can help you.